Our other top story here at five is back here. Eastern Michigan University out with an independent report on how the school handled sexual assault claims involving the school's fraternities. And that report details one pretty glaring issue. Jason Goldtharp has gone through the report. He's live in the newsroom with the latest. Jason. Well, Karen, let's start with the timeline of this report, which uh, leaves a lot to be desired in the transparency department. The university got it on Wednesday. It was released in its entirety to the media just this afternoon, and the university also announced a virtual press conference to take a handful of questions from reporters who'd had about 30 minutes to review this 36-page report. The report by firm Cozen O'Connor was commissioned by Eastern Michigan in September of 2020 following the arrests of three former EMU students for multiple sexual assaults. Today, University President James Smith declared the report is consistent with its own internal investigation. In other words, minus a few hiccups, EMU did everything it could, according to them. But the report noted the Title IX office's case files did not consistently include all relevant documentation, including key communications with parties, meeting notes, and the rationale for key case-related decisions, like whether to honor a complainant's request not to proceed with an investigation. I don't want to conflate the idea that uh, somehow there was lack of note-taking for the sake of uh, uh, the word you used, a cover-up, versus the fact that more um, sedulousness towards note-taking uh, could have been helpful to their investigation. Any notion that there's a cover-up here is just blatantly false. It, it's just blatantly false. Had there been that, Cozen O'Connor would have said it. While Cozen O'Connor had unfettered access and interviewed 25 people for the report, none were any of the victims of the assaults. I'm certainly not, uh, I, I'm not on the inside of Cozen O'Connor, so I really can't, um, Control. I can't control what uh, processes they use, nor could I decide who they should interview or who they should not. EMU announced measures to better support students, including refreshing the Title IX website, adding to employees in the Title IX office, which has already happened, and a care program for survivors. Karen? Well, Jason, as you know, I've sat down personally with two victims who have a completely different story on how they were treated and how their case was pushed so they wouldn't file a formal complaint. Yeah. We've got to ask from, from what, what you can tell in this report and doing your digging, any repercussions for anyone at the university on how this was handled? Yeah, and to that, Karen, that goes right to the Title IX office and that information they had gotten, which they were discouraged from filing this report. And you wondered what would happen and this external report found that there were some problems there. Well, uh, to answer that, nobody has been fired. And the, the president also noted that no one has even been disciplined in all of this. Hmm. Back to you. Story is not over. All right. Thank you, Jason.